Take a look at this alkene addition reaction. When cyclopentene is treated with permanganate, aqueous base, cold conditions, the pi bond is broken and two hydroxyl groups are added to the adjacent carbons. And that's not the only way to do this reaction. Osmium tetroxide, together with one of a variety of reagents, accomplishes the same transformation. We make the cis-1,2-diol from cyclopentene. I picked the cyclic alkene because the cis stereochemistry that's so easy to see makes it totally clear that this dihydroxylation takes place with syn addition. The hydroxyl groups are added to the same side of the alkene double bond. To understand that stereochemical result, we need to take a look at the reaction mechanism. First, let's look at permanganate. Following our standard arrow pushing convention, we picture a pair of these pi electrons being used to form a bond with the carbon and oxygen. That can only happen if these pi electrons move, they end up on manganese. And that can only happen if these electrons move. These electrons are used to form the other sigma bond to carbon. In one simultaneous concerted process, the pi bond breaks and the two sigma bonds between carbon and oxygen are made. This guarantees that the reaction must have syn addition stereochemistry. Both bonds must occur at the same face of the alkene. In the second step, the manganese ester is hydrolyzed to create the hydroxyl groups on adjacent carbons. To look just a little bit closer at this and understand more about the stereochemistry, I'm going to redraw this alkene on its side. Now I've shown two different things attached to each carbon. We picture formation of the intermediate. And notice that the spatial relationships of one, two, three and four haven't changed. Two and four are still toward us, one and three are back away from us. This must be the case because everything happens at once. During the hydrolysis step, we're doing nothing to break the carbon-oxygen bonds, so those stereochemical relationships remain. This accounts for the syn stereochemistry that we talked about. Beyond noting the stereochemical preference, it's worth noting that this reaction must be done under very cold conditions. Permanganate oxidizes many functional groups, including alcohols like the ones we're trying to make. When we look at the mechanism of osmium tetroxide dihydroxylation, we see it looks very similar. The electron movement for bond formation and breaking is exactly the same. Electrons remain on osmium. These electrons form a sigma bond. We make an intermediate osmate ester that is subsequently converted to the diol. I've labeled the groups attached to the alkene double bond in the same manner that I did before, and you see the same stereochemical preference remains. The groups that start out sticking toward us end up sticking toward us. One and three are away from us in the reactant, and they're away from us in the product. This accounts for the syn addition that I've talked about. In addition, it's worth noting a couple things about osmium tetroxide. This is a very expensive reagent and is highly toxic. Fortunately, conditions have been developed that lets us use osmium tetroxide in catalytic amounts. That osmate ester is released to the diol during the reaction conditions and the osmium tetroxide is regenerated. This makes using osmium tetroxide for dihydroxylation much more practical. And finally, I want to talk about one other thing about the stereochemistry. It may have already occurred to you. These reactions are not only stereoselective, they proceed with syn addition, but they're stereospecific. Starting with the Z-alkene, we make a pair of enantiomers. Starting with the E-alkene, we make a different pair of enantiomers. The stereochemistry of the product is dictated by the stereochemistry of the reactant. This is a really important fact. Dihydroxylation is stereospecific. So, in summary, using osmium tetroxide or potassium permanganate, dihydroxylation can be accomplished in good yields. The reaction is stereoselective, it proceeds with syn addition, and it's stereospecific. The stereochemistry of the alkene is maintained throughout the process and in the product, in part because of this control over stereochemistry, this dihydroxylation reaction finds widespread use in organic synthesis.